all right folks before we get started in this video i wanted to say that i didn't even know if i was gonna be able to do a vlog for the rest of the weekend as i mentioned in the last video which if you didn't watch the last video you want to go check it out because we actually did get a chance to see some really cool animals i just banged out a record number of interviews here at the show that i've ever done before 16 interviews i was able to nail out this weekend but the vlog kind of sacrificed for it, I think. I barely had a chance to film the vlog at all. That being said, uh, we did manage to salvage it, thankfully, to a couple of people. Like, I literally got to see almost none of the show. I've been to four booths for like four minutes apiece. And next year, I'm going to uh, try and make it work better to where I can have more time at different booths and not be doing this over there. It's tough because you want to spend time talking with people person to person and not be filming video the whole time. And uh, it's which is an important part of the show for me, as you guys know. But uh, it was definitely a good time. The auction was amazing. It was an amazing show. If you've never been to Tenley, well, you need to get your butt on down here and just kind of experience what it's really like. So, enough blah 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 for me. Let's get this thing started. We got Mike and Colin here. These guys just saved my butt because I've been so busy up at the booth and getting interviews done. I, I literally have not had a chance to really run around the show as the show is happening. The show is ending now. These guys stuck around for me so we could show off some cool animals for you guys and not have a completely animal-less vlog from the Tinley Park show. Single-handedly have held down the animals. So these guys do educational shows here in Chicago. They travel around the Chicago area. Crosstown Exotics is their thing. If you guys are in Chicago and you're looking to have yourself an animal show and have an educational show with some really cool animals, some great guys that are very knowledgeable about their stuff and are also very kind people, uh, well, I think you need to look no further than Crosstown Exotics. Is that correct? Yep. That's correct. That's correct. So this is uh, Wednesday. She's a salmon pink bird eater. You down to take her out? And yeah, take yeah, her out? Well, for you. yeah, she's handleable. She's good. We got her at the last uh, the March show. She's about eight years old. We got her... Uh, from the uh, uh, spider breeder here, and great, uh, great show animal. Always have the kids uh, excited to see something huge like this. And she's super docile, where she just kind of crawls on my hand and stuff, and I can walk around, uh, show a group of kids, kind of just you know, big friendly hairy spider. She doesn't even flick hairs too. A lot of tarantulas, you know, are kind of uh, hair flickers on some of the New World species. She's actually pretty chill about it. Kind of, I uh, guess that's kind of about it. These guys here are uh, wide-horned hissing cockroaches. So um, out of hissing cockroaches, these are the largest species. Um, you can see how basically where they get their name from, uh, these projections on the thorax here. And though it's actually funny, because sometimes males will headbutt on a, to kind of fight over space and whatnot. So when we have them on display, they kind of do their own little, you know, uh, territory battle thing. It's neat. Super friendly though, another just big bug. Kind of get to, um, you know, in our programs showing kids that they're not as big and scary as they look, you know, super friendly. And we kind of go over how important they are, in, you know, in the environment as far as being a decomposer and such. So this is Gamora. Uh, Gamora's our green anaconda. Um, she's only about seven years old. She was born in 2013. Uh, but this is a very slow growing species. Uh, this animal actually grows more in mass before it grows in length. Um, they are the largest bodied species of snake in the world. Uh, getting close to around 400 pounds as adults um, and ranging only around about uh, you know 18 to 19 feet uh, they say that that largest species of green anaconda actually really no longer exists or is very 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 out in the wild so it's rare to see them over 20 feet long but beautiful snakes beautiful animal and absolutely dog tame we use this animal for a lot of our educational programs um, and kids just absolutely die over here in Chicagoland area, there's actually only one institution that has these animals on display. So we're glad we get to bring them to uh, to children's parties and enter to entertain them and, and educate them about this beautiful species. Oh, dude! So this is Drax. He's our uh, caiman lizard. Um, basically, in Illinois, you can't have crocodilians without a permit. So before we got our permit, we got Drax to kind of supplement like uh, having kind of a crocodilian looking animal. And then we got lucky and got our alligator permit. But yeah, he's a super cool semi-aquatic lizard. And we did have a little bit of a hurdle to get over with them when we first got them because they're primarily snail eaters. Uh, so what I do now is I buy escargot uh, and I just kind of chop it up, mix it with Missouri diet and whatever else I want him to eat. And uh, he's been doing very well with that. He's going on, I want to say he's almost three years old. I got him in tw uh, March of 2016. And he was a tiny little guy fit in one of the deli cups and stuff and yeah. Sweet, man. And then I got Reptar uh, underneath here I can show you. We've got an albino iguana. And we got him, I want to say we've had it for about maybe two years now. So we're super stoked for when he gets huge because 
I mean, iguanas in general, um, we have a really big green iguana that does great at our uh, programs, but just seeing a giant yellow one is, is gonna be amazing. And he's super chill. He's still in that stage like where he's trying to do the whole, like, I just wanna run away, but uh, after we've been working with him, he's been pretty, pretty chill. So this is Ra. Uh, Ra is an Egyptian Euromastic. Uh, this is the largest Euromastic species, um, reaching around 30 to 36 inches long. Um, obviously, males get a lot more, or a lot larger than females do. Um, so, and this uh, is particularly a female. So we think she's about full grown now. Uh, she's born in 2011. Uh, we believe she was an import because uh, I don't think many people have had super, uh, super success with breeding them in captivity. But I might be, be misspeaking on that. Uh, this animal is uh, herbivorous, which means they're eating plant materials. And they also love to eat seeds. You'll see these animals foraging for seeds, and that's how they get a majority of their protein in their diets. Um, and obviously, the best part about these animals, their best, biggest defense, is this spiky tail here. And what they'll do is they'll wedge themselves in between flat rocks, inflate their bodies, and then throw that tail around and hope that they can stab or uh, impale whatever's trying to eat them uh, so they won't want to munch into this Euromastic. So this is Trevor here and uh, Trevor's a smooth-sided toad. We're pretty sure Trevor's a girl, but we just kind of stuck with the name Trevor. Um, and the reason we named it Trevor is if you guys uh, are Harry Potter fans, in the first movie, Neville Longbottom's pet toad was named Trevor, and they used this species in the movie, so. But these, I wanna say, the second, second or third largest toad in the world. This guy will actually get uh, somewhat bigger than this. I've heard like uh, probably another inch or so in length. Super chill, though. I mean, we use ours quite a bit, so they kind of gotten used to sitting in the hand. And um, just voracious eaters, as you can see, their bellies are, are pretty chubby. I go through about 2,000 crickets a week feeding uh, between these guys and our other frogs, but yeah, they're, they're definitely uh, eating machines. Josh's Frogs has bred these guys in captivity, which is really cool. We did purchase some babies from them last year, so we're hoping to raise those up just to kind of continue to keep having a group of them. So this is a bamboo rat snake. Her name is Rufio, obviously because she's got that awesome red coloration on her body there. Um, picked her up uh, today, hopefully to uh, kind of condition her to be a new ambassador species for our programs. Um, it's got a really awesome, uh, you know, different style to this creature. Um, bamboo rat snakes have these ridged scales along the bottom here because they are found in bamboo fields. Um, and just a really awesome snake with those beautiful patterns. I picked up some uh, undescribed geckos that the, they either are a new locality or they're a new species, and the species they're related to is 5,000 of What baby. happened to your voice, McVeigh? I, I, it's dry in our room. I can't talk, man. This guy got engaged. I did. At the auction. I did. I didn't the film the auction. There's a lot of people ever. that are filming. This guy is the luckiest dude ever, man. He's the luckiest dude ever, man. She is rad. I love you guys, man. I love you too. It's gonna be all right. I'm not gonna give you any time. <laughs> <laughs> not this time. Not this time. <laughs> Don't work too hard, McVeigh. All right. Thanks, brother. I told you about this. Oh, this yeah, is yeah. the origins. The origins of everything that's here today is in this box. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Somehow. I feel like you weren't even here. I wasn't. What? <laughs> Get your <laughs> off my table. <laughs> I finally escaped. Well, I did 100,000 interviews over there. Yeah. Yeah. Dave is sad. I'm not sad. I'm only sad because Tinley is over. Yeah. And it, and I didn't get to hang out with him at all the at whole time. At all. Because there, Dave doesn't party. There were no shenanigans this time. Not zero I do party, but not when I'm jet lagged and like so to just excuse A, B. C. Dave literally flew from Europe here essentially. And, well, no, flew not home and then drove. Right, right. So here. I flew from Amsterdam to Chicago, then to Minneapolis, got my stuff in the car drove back here to Chicago and now I have to drive home and I'll get home about three o'clock in the morning. And he set up this beautiful booth for people that have YouTube channels to come and hang out. We got Emily from Snake Discovery and, and Clint who we got to do a nice interview with earlier on Triple B TV. Very cool people. And uh, I unfortunately had nothing to do with it because I was so busy doing other stuff that I didn't even get a chance to get over and sit at this booth. But I feel like next time I have to figure out a way to make that happen to where I can actually do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How you feeling, sir? Um, groggy. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of sums up the whole show, doesn't it? <laughs> we're out of here, guys. We're gonna pack up the show here and we're gonna head on back home. Thank you guys for coming with us on the trip, as crazy as it was. If you couldn't tell how much energy I've output by the end of this video, I feel like I still have energy, but I also feel like I'm losing my mind. So, 
we're out of here, guys. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. I need to do a little job, better job of the former at the next show, I think. But look at me. I'm standing, like, up on my own two feet. See this? It's like magic. <laughs> this is a good time. Uh, see you guys soon. Bye. This is a teachable moment. For those of you guys that don't know where Python, Royal Pythons got the name, we call them ball pythons here, but Python Regius, Royal Pythons.